In this video, I'm going to tell you why Nikon cameras are better than Sony in general. Stay tuned. So chances are you're probably a Nikon user and you're thinking about going into video. Well, a good company or brand to go for is Sony. But before you jump onto the Sony bandwagon or the Nikon bandwagon, here are things that I've personally experienced with and why I think Nikons are better than Sony cameras, whether that's a Nikon 5000 versus a Sony RX Mark IV or V, whether that's a Nikon D500 better than a, a Sony A6500. Well, my first thing of why I like Nikon cameras is that it's overall user interface. Sony is known to have horrible user interface and going through the menu systems can be a headache because unlike the Nikon, Sony's menu system doesn't matter what camera or series that you go with, whether the Alpha series or the A7S, there isn't a specific chronological order or kind of common sense when it comes to their menu system. They pretty much just have their menu set up all over the place without any real kind of categorization or groups. Whereas the Nikon, you can have things like the shooting menu and within the shooting menu, it all makes sense. But then you can choose your autofocus, you, you can choose your bracketing, you can choose your metering. Oh, now underneath the shooting menu, there's also the video and filming menu and so forth and so forth. So when it comes to using Nikon cameras, Nikons have it better for overall using it and its user interface and experience because of its organized menu system and how much easier it is to jump straight into the menu system of Nikons compared to Sony cameras, where it can take you a day or even hours to try to figure out how do I change the brightness on the screen? The second thing, what I don't like about shooting on Sony cameras, this is the A6500, is that Sony itself does not have the most budget-friendly lenses and choices, which is why most people who use Sony cameras, they tend to use things like speed boosters, adapters, so then they can use their Canons or Nikons or anamorphic lens because Sony itself does not offer good glass and if there is good glass like the Zeiss then this is for your higher end consumers because the overall prices of these these Sony lenses can range anywhere from a thousand to the minimum to three to five to seven thousand in comparison to if you use the Nikon camera it's much for more for your enthusiast and it's the prices itself if you're on a low budget they're much more friendly. You can get a decent lens where I'm using right now, the Sigma 17 to 50 for 500 to $600 versus something along the lines of an 18 to 135 with the 3.5 to 5.6 varying aperture lens for close to a thousand dollars, 500 to $1,000 for the Sony lineup. And if you wanted to get a constant aperture lens, there isn't one that's at 2.8, 17 to 50, which I'm using right now, for the Sony, and if there was, or that I don't know of, it is probably in the thousands of dollars. So the second reason why Nikon cameras are better than Sony cameras is that it's overall price. Because if you don't have the biggest budget and you only had to pick two or three lenses, you're much better off going with a Nikon camera than a Sony camera. My last and final gripe and why Nikon cameras are better than Sony cameras for photos or videos is the lack of ability of having an articulating screen. Because whoever designed the Sony series, especially with the Alpha series or the R7 series, Nikon does have an articulating screen. In other words, I can flip the screen around and see myself and see whether or not I'm in frame, whether I'm not under or overexposed. But as you can see here, the Sony camera does not have an articulating screen. It can only go up like that. It can go down and it can go towards you. In other words, these articulating screens on Sony cameras are meant for more of the people who like to be behind the camera. You can't vlog with a Sony Alpha series or an A7S unless you attach some kind of rig and you have a cage and you have an external small HD on top of this. But having the luxury of an articulating screen for a Sony camera, 
that would be a huge benefit to Sony and it would destroy its competition. So my biggest gripe with the Sony lineup line is that there's no articulating screen. You can't flip out the screen and it's more meant for people who like to do films. People who are essentially behind the camera more so than being in front of the camera. And that's my biggest gripe about it. If you want to be a person that's in front and behind, yes, you know, there's obviously workarounds, but we're talking about if you want to get dive straight into videography and do content that you're behind and in front of the camera, you're much better off with a more budget friendly pricing with a better articulating screen and user interface with something along the lines of a Canon, of a Nikon instead of a Sony camera. So those are my overall thoughts on why Nikons are better than Sony cameras. But as you already know, Sony overall itself has much more better visuals and it's much more meant for video than Nikon cameras are. But like what I preach is that you should not let your camera dictate whether it is you're a filmmaker, you're a photographer, X, Y, Z, news with what you got. It doesn't matter what camera. Yes, in the end, when you have, your, you're comparing the super high 4K quality of a Sony A series versus 720 slow motion on a Nikon, yes, right, Sony's are better. But this video is why Nikon's are better than Sony cameras. Stay tuned for part two, where I talk about why Sony, especially the a6500 or even the vlog RX100s are better than Nikon cameras. But that'll be for another video. My name is Peter. You're watching Broke Visionary Collective where we all start with nothing, but you can always create something.